Sometimes celebrities are left with no choice but to put disrespectful YouTubers in their place. Like the time Gordon Ramsay had to shut down a crazy vegan teacher. The beef between Ramsay and that vegan teacher took over the internet in 2021 for just how absurd it was. On the one hand, we had Gordon, a distinguished chef who has won 17 Michelin stars through his career and is famous worldwide. And on the other, we had that vegan teacher, a YouTuber whose every video gets bombarded with hate and he's been banned from TikTok multiple times. There's no world in which these two people should have been interacting but that vegan teacher had a plan. She posted what would be the first of many videos going after Gordon for his use of meat, starting by explaining to him, a world-renowned chef, what is and isn't food. So Gordon, one of the problems that I noticed that you have is you don't seem to understand the difference between food and animals. So food is something that you get out of the ground or you take it from a tree. Now animals are alive. They are sentient beings like us, like chickens and cows, sheep, pigs. You know, these things are not actually foods. While this argument is flawed, that vegan teacher was at least trying to use logic here, something that she completely abandoned in her subsequent videos. Her hate for Gordon was just too difficult to hide and she began attacking him for anything she could. Today we're going to talk about the devil. The devil's name is Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay is in fact a racist person because this is racism. Look at it, he puts them in there and he's, they're so messy, they're not even neat and tidy and he's supposed to be like one of the best chefs ever. Look at those eggs. My two-year-old granddaughter could do something better than that. Despite her best efforts to defame him, the people in her comment section weren't having any of it. Animals eat each other. What are you gonna do? Tell the lions not to eat meat? Gordon Ramsay is a great person. Your ordinary person will take a look at these comments and the overwhelming dislike ratios and start to question themselves, but not that vegan teacher. Not for one minute did she doubt herself and instead of backing off, she doubled down. She started accusing Gordon of being a terrible father during a video in which his daughter played a prank on him. So now she takes the egg and smashes it on his head. Now I know on the surface it might seem like fun. You might think to yourself, well, he's an, he seems like a nice dad, but he's not because he is teaching speciesism. That's what this family is all about. And it's just wrong. At this point, it had become clear to her that going after Ramsay brought in a lot of views. So she went on to make a diss track about him, as well as a video trying to convince one of his sponsors to abandon him. However, it wasn't until she posted this song on TikTok that she finally caught Gordon's attention. In response to the song, Gordon posted a stitched video to his TikTok page where he shared his thoughts. Eating animals is wrong, Gordon Ramsay. Vegan donut. So Gordon faked that vegan teacher out by munching on a bit of lettuce, then called her a vegan donut while biting into a meaty beef burger, raking in over 66 million views and 12 million likes in the process. Vegan donut got me on the floor rolling. How can you not love Gordon, especially after this? Frankly, he could have stopped there and walked away with the dub, but there was one more message Gordon wanted to send. You see, there are many farmers who have suffered abuse and vitriol at the hands of people like that vegan teacher. And in support of them, Gordon decided to post a compilation video captioned, always standing behind farmers, grateful for the work they do and passion they have on a daily basis. So thank you, Chef Ramsay. Thank you, Chef Ramsay. Thanks, Chef Ramsay. When all was said and done, Gordon walked away from the situation looking like a funny good guy, while that vegan teacher walked away from it looking like a crazy radicalist. The sad thing is, she's still making videos about Gordon to this day, but her moment in the spotlight is long behind her. This video is sponsored by MyBookie. There's nothing quite like the feeling of having some skin in the game for a sporting event. It has the potential to turn even a basic matchup into the highlight of a season, and it elevates the thrill of the big games to a whole new level. For me, I love betting on combat sports, and I've had a crazy run this past year, which has really paid off. Thankfully, with MyBookie, you can bet on so many different sports that there's no doubt you'll be able to find something for you. Recently, the new college football season kicked off, and there are so many fun matchups on the way. Every catch, sack, and touchdown will be an opportunity to win and given the average college football game runs about 180 plays you'll be spoiled for choice if you're an avid football fan take advantage of your knowledge and get involved while you can it's my bookie's 10th anniversary and with that they're offering a bonus of up to $1,000 on your first deposit they'll match 100% of whatever you put in and they'll even throw a $10 casino chip in there to claim all you have to do is follow the link in the description of this video and use the promo code tell us more it's that easy so make sure to kick things off funded by the house 
Logan Paul shocked a lot of people when he joined the WWE because love him or hate him, he showed he's a natural. He's always been athletic and he wrestled in high school and college, so maybe it's not so surprising that he took to it well. But he's made a statement in his relatively short career. Since becoming part of the organization, he's had several star wrestlers on his podcast, including Roman Reigns, John Cena, Cody Rhodes, Triple H, and Rey Mysterio. However, the one wrestler Logan would want on the podcast more than anyone else has never come on, and there's a reason for that. Since he was a kid, Logan has always looked up to and idolized The Rock, and his dream has been to have a career similar to his. I wanted to be like Dwayne. So when Logan started blowing up on YouTube and he got the chance to collaborate with Dwayne, he was over the moon. What's up, bro? No peace. Oh, strong grin. Oh, that ain't nothing. Oh, well, yo, it's good to see you, bro. It's good to see you too, man. The videos they made together went mega viral, 70 million views, 50 million views, and linked up a couple times. I would have considered us acquaintances, at least, you know? It's like very friendly with each other. Like, me and Dwayne, what's up? Everything was going great, but not long after he and The Rock started hanging out, the Japan forest incident happened. Overnight, Logan became the most hated man on the internet, and The Rock decided to cut all ties with him. He, he basically wanted nothing to do with me. He requested that I remove all the content we've ever done together, and basically kicked me to the curb. I would have done the same thing. Guy in his position doesn't want to be affiliated with a person who did uh, something as reprehensible as that. Man, it just stunk so bad. And it wasn't like I got the call from him. I got it from the publicist. You might think The Rock was just preserving his own image and business interests, but this situation actually hit close to home for him. See, in 2015, The Rock's mother attempted to unalive herself. In an Instagram post, he explained that she got out of the car on Interstate 65 in Nashville and walked into oncoming traffic. Big rigs and cars swerving out of the way not to hit her. Apparently, he had to grab her and pull her back out of the road. Given this experience, what Logan did really didn't sit right with him, and they never reconciled their relationship. Dwayne doesn't give a f about me. He's the biggest movie star in the world. Why, why should he care? I made a mistake and he doesn't want anything to do with me and that's, that's kosher. That's how it's gonna be. You can tell how much this gets to Logan, but I guess that's what you get for doing something so horrible. With The Rock still being heavily involved with the WWE, there's no doubt they'll cross paths again, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. A head to head between Neon and Dana White is something no one could have predicted. But on December 16th, 2023, that's exactly what we got. It was the night of UFC 296 where Leon Edwards was set to fight Colby Covington and Neon had tickets for the event. As with most UFC events, there were numerous high profile individuals in attendance, including the other important character in this story, former President Donald Trump. Now Neon knew that Trump would be in attendance and on the day of the event, he sent a message to his fans on a live stream. I'm letting you guys know ahead of time, the UFC event, we have four seats. It's going to be a very good experience. Every celebrity and their mother is going to be there, but there's one problem. Um, Donald Trump and the Secret Service are going to be there. So here's my plan, chat. Um, you know, you can clip this and, uh, you know, foreshadow it in the future. What's going to happen is I'm going to walk up, um, you know, I'm going to talk my shit to Trump and then um, it's going to be a very good experience. And I'm going to talk my shit. I don't care if the Secret Service is there. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to talk shit. So it's all good. It's going to be a very good uh, time. It's going to be uh, very interesting. And yeah, don't say anything. Um, I don't think the Secret Service is about shit, so we should be fine. It goes without saying that threatening the former president of the United States and also talking shit about the Secret Service was beyond stupid. But what made it worse was that Neon was saying all of this while he was outside of a gun range. And just minutes later, he was walking around with an RPG in his hand. I guess he saw the whole thing as an easy way to get attention, giving little thought to the potential consequences. But he should have known he wouldn't just get away with that. It didn't take long for Dana to catch wind of the things he said. And soon after, Neon was informed he wouldn't be allowed to enter the arena. Apparently, Neon's not allowed in. What? They, use, they dropped your name specifically. Huh? They just dropped your name specifically, bro. They said Neon is not allowed in. In the stadium? Yes. What? I'm not allowed bro, in. You specifically, so now I need to talk to them about refunding the damn money. Hold on, no, 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 there's no fucking way. No, 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 you stay your ass in the car. Dana was asked what happened at the post fire press conference and he ripped into Neon. There's a popular streamer online called Neon and he yeah. said he was a banned from the arena tonight, specifically by- He by said he was banned from the arena? No, what happened is he, he said some stupid shit on Instagram and uh, you know, he, he bought tickets so he wasn't anywhere close. When you start saying stupid shit like that, yeah, you're probably gonna get busted up and thrown out of here, you know, making threats and talking dumb shit, looking for clout. I believe he said he was gonna- confront, I don't care what he said. I think he said he was gonna confront Donald Trump. I don't care what he said. Did he? He wasn't able to. He's just f tall too. You know that? Can punk. 
The following day, Neon's manager made a post on Twitter apologizing on his behalf. He said, Out of respect for the whole UFC, Dana White, Red Rock, and the greatest president to ever live, last night my client's actions were unacceptable and I'd like to formally apologize to anyone that was disrespected. Last night was the final straw. No more disrespectful trolling. Neon seemed to get the message because a couple days later, he went live and apologized for what he said. I want to start off by, um, you know, apologizing to... Um UFC, Donald Trump and Dana White for everything I said. And, um, you know, I actually, that night when I, when I said all that, the problem with me is like, I put the camera on and I black out and I don't realize. And like, I'm, I actually started to realize it. Like it, it hit me in the head, Chad. It hit me in the head that I'm like really like doing too much, like too, too much. Like it's not even worth it. Like I like talk too crazy and I don't even realize it. And it's like, I don't even try to get the clip. It's not even that. I don't even try to go for the clip. It's just, I just say whatever the f I want and I feel like I'm behind the screen when in reality I'm in person. Like someone could literally just come like and just shoot me in the head, but I don't like understand it. I want to sincerely apologize. Um, I didn't mean anything I said and um, it should have never come out of my mouth in the first place and I, I take ownership. Apparently at around 3 a.m. on the night of the fight, Dana called Neon down to talk to him at the Red Rock Hotel. Neon apologized to him, which is the first time he's ever apologized to anyone in person and Dana accepted. It made me realize that, you know, I'm not this big fucking tough guy, I'm a loser. And I gotta realize it, you know? Um, and he didn't have to accept my apology or whatever. He could have just said, fuck me to my face and whatever, but he accepted it. And uh, thank you for that, bro. Uh, if you ever see this clip, I really appreciate it, bro. W Dana in the chat, bro. To a lot of you, the name Soldier Boy is probably a blast from the past. Back in the 2000s, he was a larger than life figure with his song Crank That practically taking over the world. He paved the path for social media virality by being the first rapper to really make use of platforms like YouTube. And for that reason, many will always respect him. However, in recent years, a lot of people have put disrespect on Soldier Boy's name due to his lack of presence in the rap game and his constant feuds. And one of the offenders is DJ Academics. DJ Academics is a YouTuber, podcaster, and interviewer who covers news in the music industry, specifically in hip hop. He's no stranger to butting heads with the rappers he interviews. And in one 2019 interview released by Complex, he got into a very awkward confrontation with Soldier Boy. You see, the host of the show had been running their mouths about Soldier in a previous episode. So right out of the gate, he began to put them in their place, starting with DJ Academics. Why you think Academics sitting in here right now? Mm. I'm the reason Academics sitting in here. Mm. Nah, hold on, we got <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Oh, <laughs> yo, 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 no, 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 no. Okay. But folks, when I was beefing with Chris Brown and Migos, this nigga made 20, 30 videos on me in one day, two days. Mm. Now I ain't gonna lie, I I'm, the, I'm the first biggest rapper to shout this nigga out, bro. Before me, nobody respect the academics in the rap game. Y'all gotta put some respect on my name. At this point, they should have realized that Soldier didn't come to play. But later in the podcast, Academics and his co-hosts tried suggesting that he wasn't doing so well financially, which was a big mistake. I haven't seen you on the Billboard Trust. Bro, it's, you, I don't, well, I don't know. I don't care, nigga. I've been getting his money. I don't give a fuck what you've been seeing. I don't think nobody would sit here and say you unsuccessful. No, you just tried you to play respect. me like I was, bro. No. She was like, y'all think Soldier Boy got money in the bank and y'all think, yo, is you crazy? After this, Academics was itching to get back at Soldier, so he went after him for his Gucci headband, but Soldier was having none of it. I'm really and truly a genius and niggas hate me. They hate on me because I'm rich. I look better than them. I probably didn't fuck they bitch. They bitch like me. I'm a pretty nigga. I look good. I'm sexy. It is you what it is. You gotta that Gucci headband, bro. Like, no, nigga, I, you know what? This, this is a worse now because y'all keep clowning me. I'm Wear it even more so y'all can keep talking. I love it, bro. I, I love you. Need the minute. I love y'all. I can go back. <laughs> oh, is that Drake? Oh, hold up. Well, the rack show. Oh, shit. I can go buy, you know Damn. what I'm saying? Motherfucking 30 of these headbands, bro. Later, academics took another wrong step when Juice World was brought up. Do you really think you gave Juice World his name? I think Juice World told me I gave him his name. Idiot, did you not see his interview with, with Sway? Did you, not, did you not see his interview with Sway where he said, where Sway said, where did you get your name? And he okay. said, Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy, the only one I know to shut academics up with facts. You'd think at this point, academics would back off, but he's a glutton for punishment. He brought up an interview Soldier had done the day prior on The Breakfast Club, where he said that Drake stole his flow on the song, Miss Me. Tell me what's really going on. Drizzy Drake back in this thing already. What's that? That's Oh, Soldier! Shit. That's oh, my bar! Shit. He copied my oh, whole fucking shit. flow! That kissed me through the phone! He copied my whole fucking flow! Oh, word for shit. word, bar for bar! He wasn't lying. Drake did use his flow and copied his bars almost word for word. But Academics still decided to grill Soldier on it, saying that he stole the bars from another rapper. You a hater. That's not a hater. You a I'm trying hater. to You try to pull up shit. the bullshit behind it. Nah, nigga, everybody know Drake stole my flow, bro, and that's the end of it. He took a line from you and you took the same line from another nigga. 
And you fat as and shut the fuck up. You could see Soldier was over it at this point and they closed the interview out soon after. This was probably a good idea because I'm not sure how much more punishment academics could have taken. When it comes to hated YouTube personalities, Jack Doherty is pretty high on people's list. He's known for harassing people in public and then cowardly hiding behind his bodyguard for protection. Essentially, he bullies people for content and carries out stupid pranks with no regard for anyone but himself. What's interesting is, Jack was on an episode of Dr. Phil a few years ago, where Dr. Phil warned him about his childish antics and the path he was going down. In the episode, they looked at a prank video Jack made where he stole his brother's car and drove it without even having a license. I'm gonna be stealing my brother's car because why not? Oh my gosh, she's coming! Look out, look out, look out! Now compared to stuff Jack does these days, this prank really wasn't so bad, but I guess Dr. Phil saw something worrying in him that he wanted to deal with before it was too late. Jack's brother Michael dialed into the show to talk about what happened. He explained to Dr. Phil that he didn't find the prank funny, but every time he tried to speak, Jack would interrupt him. Yo, oh, looking back, it was me. funny though. Come on, that was great. You popped me like three times in the face. I thought he was gonna crash or something, and also I, I think he was just trying. If I crash, I'd buy a new one. Let's be real. Later, Doctor Phil told him he's met a lot of popular influencers who don't resort to pranking people to be successful, but you could tell Jack didn't give a damn. The look on his face screamed, "Why is this annoying old guy trying to give me a lecture?" I think if you would morph things into uh, being more creative and. I think they're so creative. No one's ever done those types of stuff. Okay, we're done here. If only Jack had taken this advice, he might have actually turned out okay. But he probably just went on the show as a publicity stunt to get his name out there. Trying to give him some advice and he wants to talk rather Jack, than listen. Jack, don't interrupt He's him very again. hard to get along with, I'm sorry. Jack. I mean, Dr. Phil was clearly pissed off at this point. You could see it all over his face. Jack's dad tried to get him to fall in line, but it was too little, too late. I've You're tried several times to give him some advice, but he wants to interrupt and argue. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him float on his back. So I'm done here. During the break, Dr. Phil called Jack a know-it-all before him and his dad were escorted off set. Dr. Phil really just shamed him like a teacher does when you're talking too much in class. I don't know if I've ever seen Dr. Phil so done with someone. His eyes look tired. I do wonder if Dr. Phil has seen how Jack turned out and how right he was about him. He's become an absolute menace to society and for the longest time he got away with it. However, recently he's finally started to face some consequences. Jack's now involved in a lawsuit after his bodyguard needlessly assaulted a man at a party and he's been humiliated multiple times on camera by people who have gotten sick of him and hit him. Time will tell whether he learns anything from this because for now, it doesn't look like he has. 